Onion time! Friends and lovers, welcome to the Jim Pressions for Million Onion Hotel at bloody last. It's been taking Justin and me bloody days to get this video up. Like, the, uh, the iPhone's new screen recording feature is nice and useful, but god damn to video editing softwares not like it. I don't know why I said softwares in plural, I could have just said software, that's plural enough. But anyway, Million Onion Hotel. This is a mobile game which we don't often cover uh, in any capacity when I did reviews or doing a Jim Pressions video, but with the screen recorder in place and me having stumbled upon what I believe to be a very fun mobile game which is just well, it's like finding a unicorn these days. One that isn't a free-to-play, loot-boxy, gacha-gamey, gambly piece of crap. This costs four bucks. Now, I know to some people that's gonna sound high, but this particular run was 18 minutes long, and I feel like I was nowhere near beating it. And I've played it several times since, edging my way closer, closer towards uh, an end goal, whatever that may be. But, in the meantime, as I work towards that goal, I've been having a ton of fun with it. Now, it starts off quite simple, as you can see here. We've got ourselves a, a kind of whack-a-mole situation going. Uh, I, I just managed to clear two columns in one go, initiating fever here, which uh, earns you fruit for bonus points and various characters that you can rescue. This is space, by the way, because as this game says, the universe is nonsense. Now, I need to talk about the Onion Games Twitter account. So the developer for this is called Onion Games, and I've been following them on Twitter for a long time because they're sort of amazing. Uh, the Onion Games Twitter account sort of cracks on that it's an actual living onion. So believe me when I say it's well worth following. Uh, give that a look. I'll probably do a link to the, that in the description or something But they finally came out with this game Million Onion Hotel when I first started playing it I really did think well This is a bit of a simplistic whack-a-mole type thing But even as you can just see from this little cutscene here things get a little bit unusual and Like so many games that I really really like uh, Some of my favorite games are ones that have a very simple concept so that, that, that they then sorry, it was very stuttery a very simple concept that they then extrapolate upon uh, without coming up with lots of different gimmicks. Take one gimmick and then find multiple ways of uh, playing around with it. And as this gameplay session progresses, you'll see what I mean. I'd be remiss, of course, not to talk about how bloody adorable the whole thing is. The little chanting onions are cute as fuck. Uh, you gotta love the procession of cows because space, of course, is full of cows. That's how the universe works. As we can see here, things have started to change a little because it's not just onions coming up now. We've had weird little bell things, we've got these paintbrushes, and they take more taps to take out than the onions. So it becomes a bit of a strategy thing because the onions don't stay on the screen forever. If I spend all my time tapping on the things that take a long time to get rid of, those onions are gonna disappear. And you don't want that because, as you can see from the grid, we're trying to build like red columns and rows because that adds to our timer where everything's on a time limit. So if you complete a column, you get a timer. If you complete two columns, you know, or rows at once, which is difficult to pull off, but if you can manage it, you initiate fever, you get two uh, timers, upgrade, two time upgrades, you know, whatever. Uh, it, it's just beneficial, obviously, to be more efficient with the onions you're tapping on. Uh, which I always find uh, to be good advice in general. When you're tapping on onions, always try and tap them a lot. I don't really go anywhere with that. Anyway, this is more of a puzzle thing. We were trying to deal with these paintbrushes to get a column going, but it was only paintbrushes, so it was more difficult. Uh, that's something that comes up often, is working out a particular puzzle within the whack-a-mole situation. Now we've initiated a boss fight, which is against Kikoru-san, or Hikoru-san, sorry. It's a giant onion head. Now, some of these onion knights that we've got bouncing at the bottom of the screen, if we tap on them, as you can see, they fly towards the onion boss, dealing major damage. Uh, during a boss fight, we're uh, collecting these columns and rows, not just to get extra time, but to get extra onion knights. 
It also helps to initiate fever uh, during the game before a boss fight because there are more powerful onion knights that hide in the universe because the universe is nonsense. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, bosses deal damage by landing and taking time off of your timer meter that you're seeing in the top left of the screen, which of course is a problem. And so far, mostly because of that, I'm yet to get past the third boss. Uh, I don't know if I can keep this chat up long enough before getting there. I've got 18 minutes of this game recorded basically, and I am winging it as I talk. Anyway. We're out of that boss fight now. I could just commentate on what's going on because the visuals are interesting enough to do that, uh, as well as the mechanics, which, as I say, subtly change. Bit of a risque game. Full sexual intercourse, as you can see there. And it gets a little bit more risque than that even, which, again, we'll get to if I can keep talking long enough. So there's reason to keep watching. Now, again, here we see another bit where the gameplay changes. So not only are we tapping on onions and tapping on these stalks a lot to try and get them to fly up in the air and get 2,000 points, the army's getting involved. You keep seeing this little army fella appearing at the top of the, well, I guess, the hotel house. The, the, the play space, the grid, keeps appearing at the top of that. Now, one thing we've got to watch out for in this level and beyond is the windows. Those windows on either side, they opened at the beginning of this. Now, when a window opens, they're warning you that something's gonna fall from the sky. And you have to, here we go. You see here, boom. I don't know if you saw that because I was I was physically pointing at my own computer screen to try and show you it. Uh, but what happened, if you did catch it, was one of the grids had a shadow on it and it was accompanied by a whistling noise which meant that something was falling on that particular square in the grid. Now you have to keep your finger held there on that square to keep an umbrella held up so that the falling item bounces away, you don't lose precious seconds on your clock, and your onions can keep growing because if that thing lands, as we see here, look at the bottom right corner, something landed and it, it damaged that onion. That onion was out of play for a few moments, which can be devastating if you're trying to fill up a column or a row. So that's when things start to get really quite tricky, and it only gets more tricky from there. Uh, hopefully you can sort of see how the game's evolved beyond the whack-a-mole concept initially. Uh, as I said, I was a little bit disappointed when I first started playing it, but once I started getting deeper into it, into the onion time that is Million Onion Hotel. I've become, as I'm sure you can tell from my excited tone, just absolutely endeared by this bloody thing. To say nothing of the friggin' storyline, or, or, you know, I guess we call it a storyline that happens in between gameplay segments. So that fella's angry, got shot, but <gasps> Double Agent got shot by the woman he was boinking. The plot thickens and the onions continue. So here we are, Umbrella made the, I think it was a paintbrush, bounce off, so we protect ourselves there. Still, it's very satisfying to tap on those big stalks, beanstalks, I suppose, maybe, and get them to fly in the air like rockets. Uh, I must say, I was pretty pleased with my performance on this one. It wasn't a winning performance, obviously, I only made it to 18 minutes, but uh, again, I mean, that's part of why I recommend this game at four bucks, because one session can last, you know, for me it's lasted up to eight minutes, it goes higher than that. Uh, your first go or two might not last that long, but it's well worth keeping up. The more I play it, just that little bit further I get. I still haven't got far enough to defeat the third boss, but I'm working on it. Every, t every time I play it, I get a little bit closer. What I really need to do is initiate fever like I've done here to try and get as many uh, special onion knights as possible before seeing that boss, but so far I've not been quite that lucky. Been quite lucky here though. Uh, I I'll say that Luck as well as skill played a role in my particular performance for this video, uh, which I was quite thrilled by because on PS4 you can play really well and then hit the record button and say look how well I did, whereas anything else if I use capture uh, software for the Switch or the Xbox One um, or the PC, uh, I have to, or, or indeed iOS as we're seeing here, I've just got to hit record and then hope I do well. So as you can see, thanks to that fever, we had a lot of Onion Knights to launch initially uh, to take off a big whack of this Big Duck's health. 
Now I'm still hitting onions even when the boss is invincible and not on the screen because you want to still keep completing those grids and those columns because of the timer, obviously. You're, you're, you're taking time damage every time the enemy lands. So you're constantly trying to beat that back by picking up more clocks. And of course, as I say, during a boss fight, you get onion knights for clearing these rows and columns, which we can then fire right at Yasuda-san. I think I said that right. Yasuda-san, the duck bird thing with an egg on its head. Because why not? Because video games, because the universe is nonsense, because Million Onion Hotel kicked that bird's ass. Got an achievement, I think. I don't know what it was that popped up just then. It might have been an email. <laughs> I don't know, I might have got an email there while I was playing. Yeah, I was, I, that, I remember now. I was playing this on, what was it? It was either Thanksgiving or Black Friday I was playing this. I was getting PR emails from people. I was like, haven't you got fucking families? I've got an excuse. I'm British. I don't really, I've got nothing to be thankful for being English. So I've got an excuse to be working on the holidays. If you're an American PR company, don't send me fucking emails about your fucking games that I'm probably not going to play because I'm too busy playing Million Onion Hotel because I want to get a million onions. The storyline is thickening here. A rocket's been sent up into the sky. Don't you see? Don't you understand what's going on? Anyway, it's at this point the game gets really fucking challenging because we've got lots of beanstalks, onions popping up everywhere and more things than ever falling from the sky. Also, uh, I believe we are going to get far enough to see this now. Um, I really messed up on this run um, doing, like, I misunderstood a particular enemy. And I didn't really learn how the, I say enemy, the, the, the things on the screen that you tap, a particular element of the game. And I didn't learn about how to really deal with it until I played enough to unlock one of the game's story cards. You unlock story cards as you progress and they give you little backstory details and bios on anything from the onion to the person who appears in the window to warn you of falling stuff. But these little weird voodoo doll clay golem things turn up and I thought I had to keep tapping them so that an onion could grow in their place but it turns out that's not what you do. But we'll get there. Right now we're dealing with bombs. We've got to deal with bombs. They'll blow up and they'll just do damage to the area. Uh, if I recall correctly, I think they undo the red columns. Like, like any red squares that you've made, if they explode, they undo those. And you don't want to do that, because that'll suck for you. Most importantly though, it's just really, really nice to have a mobile game that I give a crap about again. A mobile game that I really like. A mobile game that's an honest transaction. A simple case of, you pay me money for the product, and now you have the product, which is not only rare for mobile games, but unfortunately has become very rare in uh, the mainstream game industry as well. Here we are with a lot of bombs. This is another one of those puzzle type style, uh, well puzzle style moments where we've got to try and initiate onion time. Uh, oh, this is Magic Party. I'm going to keep quiet for this bit. Enjoy. <laughs> So that happened anyway, and now shit really hits the fan. Once the Million Onion Hotel is basically firebombed, that's when things get quite serious indeed. Uh, we're dealing with our beanstalks, we're dealing with missiles falling from the sky, we're of course dealing with onions. Rats have joined in, because of course they have. Uh, things fly in thick and fast. We're still dealing with paintbrushes and cowbell type things and bombs. And I see an opportunity to get a single there that I didn't take unfortunately. I think I was a bit too worried about the, uh, falling, uh, the falling object that I didn't stop. Uh, that is one issue with, well not an issue with the game, but it's one of the challenges is uh, 
trying to keep an eye on everything on the screen and also trying to work out where the thing's going to land when you're warned about it because trying to find that small round shadow can be a little bit difficult when the screen is just filled up with stuff you know just so much stuff happening all at once but it's not so chaotic as to be unplayable here here are the guys i messed up with uh, these little clay golem looking fellows now i kept tapping on them you tap on them and they disappear uh, but what you're supposed to do is leave them, I think, because on their character bio card, when, when I finally unlocked it, it said that if you stare at it long enough, it turns into an onion. And uh, when I next played it after I got that card, I just left them. And it did seem that they did turn into onions eventually. You might even see some uh, that I leave too long that I'm not tapping. Of course, it's hard for you to tell what I'm tapping and what I'm not because my fat, greasy finger isn't being seen on the screen. I'm just recording the screen. You're just seeing things fly and disappear. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I, I hope you've worked out that, uh, that the point of this was that I'm tapping on things, that this isn't just objects and onions flying away of their own volition. Every time you see something get tapped, I'm, I'm tapping it. Uh, so even though I didn't know quite what to do with those little figures, I did at least get to... Uh, what is it? Haruki? Haruki? Hikuri? I can't read it from here. I can't read it from here. I can't read it from here. It's a Mark II of the Onion Head guy. And this is as far as I've ever gotten. Um, not beaten this one yet. Come damn close. Damn, damn close. But with the amount of damage he takes off when he lands and the the lack of time that I've accrued beforehand, not to mention the amount of Onion Knights that uh, I could do with saving up. Uh, like I said, I really could do with trying to hit some fevers before this third boss. Uh, just to try and keep myself in the game, but otherwise right now it's just the ratio of damage to time is not in my favour and unfortunately every time I've reached this stage so far that's happened, I've hit the time up uh, but fa faint heart, one not fair made I think that's, no, that's not how that phrase goes at all. The point of the matter is, is that I'm committed to continuing to play Million Onion Hotel whenever I'm bored, of course, and uh, seeing what else it's got for me because that was, you know, about 15, 15 to 18. It's an 18 minute video, but some of that's the beginning and end of just the, st the screen recording. But it's a lot of gameplay just for one session. Uh, I thought I'd show you some of these cards here. Uh, that you unlock throughout the gameplay. There we go. Look, it's the moon. Something will fall from the sky. Some of these bios are quite enjoyable indeed. And they just tell you what I would call pointless backstory. Uh, they're just so weird and wonderful. And it, it brings the spirit of the Onion Games Twitter account into the actual game. Uh, and that's important because the Onion Games Twitter account was so absolutely endearing and it would make sense that a game based purely on onions would be equally endearing. Here's an onion knight here helping us out. They float in space, powerful spear attacks, bosses, brave onions. Oh, also there are super powerful ones hidden somewhere. So they're the ones you want to try and get. Fever Bell is my favorite one. One of the doctor's inventions warps you to far away space. The universe is nonsense. It is a high score zone. Get lots of fruit, please. Can't say fairer than that. Good game.